All right, so for 1.5, we are going to compare and order fractions. Because remember, mathematicians like to have things in order. So one of the questions that we pose is how can we compare the fractions 7 tenths and 3 fourths? And usually we're looking for which one is greater than um, the other fraction. So if we want to put them in a nice organized line. So think to yourself, how have you compared these in the past? So if I had seven out of the 10 pieces of pizza, so I had seven tenths of the pizza, or I had three fourths of the pizza, pizza, which one would be bigger? And you are right. We usually use our what we call the least common denominator. So the least common denominator of two or more fractions is the least common multiple. And again, that's the LCM of the denominators. So we kind of interchange these terms, least common multiple, least common denominator. We just really throw in the least common denominator when we're dealing with fractions. So you can think about them as being the same. And remember, your multiple is going to be more than. What is it? Um, so I'll just do the quick one of 2 and 8. Our multiple graded, or at least common multiple of 2 and 8, we have 2 times 1 is 2 times 2, or sorry. Two times two, four, and I just like to count by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. And then here we put our freebie down. Oh, but we're already done. We technically don't even need to put sixteen. We can if we want, because our common multiple, our least common multiple, is going to be eight. So we would want to use that with the fractions in order to compare. So. I know a lot of you are like, I already know how to do this. I'm just writing down the steps to help us in order to um, go nice and slow in case you do need that help. And that's okay because we all learned math at different levels. So how are we going to compare those two fractions that we had at the beginning? The first thing you want to do is you want to find your least common denominator of the fractions. So you're going to be looking at your fractions and you're going to be finding that least common multiple. Once we have that common denominator, we're going to write what we call equivalent fractions, which was from 1.3. And then after we have our common fractions or common denominators, all we need to do is compare the numerators to see which one is bigger. All right, so here's an example. One seventh, comparing it with one third. We want to um, see which one is greater. So if I was to list out seven and threes, and I'm just going to do three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. And some of you probably already found the common denominator even before me writing it out. And then it's going to be seven, 14, 21. Oh, there we go common denominator is going to be 21, or least common denominator. So what I need to do is rewrite these fractions. So I have 1 7th needs to turn into a fraction that has the same value but now has a denominator of 21. And I have to do that for 1 3rd as well. As well. So one of the ways that I like to do this is I like to ask myself, hmm, how do I get a 7 to turn into a 21? So if what do I multiply by to get to 21? Oh, 7 times 3. And if I multiply the bottom of a fraction by 3, I have to multiply the top by 3. And then let's take a look at this fraction. How does a 3 get to a 21? 3 times 7 gives us 21. And if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 21, I have to do the same to the top, my numerator. So if I was going to compare these, yeah, I automatically know that this one is going to be greater.
because 7 slices out of the 21 is much bigger than 3 slices out of the 21. All right. So let's look at this one again. Now again, some of you can just tell right off the bat what your common multiple is um, because you're good with your multiplication facts. So just in case you weren't, let's just go ahead and list this out. Okay, so 16, so 16 and then 32. I'm going to go ahead and do the 4 for a bit. So then 4, 8, 12, 16. Oh, look, I already have my common denominator my least common denominator. So I don't have to do anything with this one because it's already has a 16 as a denominator. But I do need to change this 3 fourths to have a denominator of 16. And then again, you ask yourself, how does a 4 turn into a 16? Multiply by 4. If you multiply the bottom of a fraction by 4, you better multiply the top by 4. That makes that copycat of 4 over 4, 12. So if I was going to compare 9 sixteenths to 12 sixteenths, I can see that this is greater. All right, so here we're going to go with this one. Oops, let me erase that. And again, some of you might see right off the bat what your common denominator is. Um, and just by knowing your multiplication facts. So 14, 14, 28. Hmm, I already have a 28 here, so let's see if these get to 28. So 7, 7. And you don't have to go through this process if you already know what it is. 21, 28. Oops, sorry about that. And then 4. Oh, look, I already have another 28. And let's see. Write your freebie down. 4 times 1 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 4 times 3 is 12. 4 times 4 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20. 4 times 6 is 24. And 4 times 7 is 28. Woohoo! We already found our least common denominator. So right now, I need this 14 to turn to 28, the 7 to turn to a 28, and the 4 to turn to a 28. That's already a 28. So that's a freebie. So let's go ahead and rewrite these. 9 fourteenths needs to turn into a fraction over 28. 5 sevenths needs to turn into a fraction over 28. And then I'll go ahead and write this one over here. 3 fourths needs to turn into an equivalent fraction with a denominator of 28. I'm going to go ahead and just change this color real quick. Let's do the green. So, i got to ask yourself, 14 times what gives you 28? That's 2. So if I multiply the bottom of the fraction by 2, I better multiply the top by 2. 9 times 2 is 18. So this is an equivalent fraction. And then you ask yourself, hmm, how does the 7 get to a 28? Multiply it by 4. If I multiply the bottom by 4, I better multiply the top by 4 to get an equivalent fraction of 20 over 28. And then 4 times 7 and 3 times 7, 21. Okay, so now I have all these equivalent fractions that I can compare now because they all have the same denominator. Okay. So just right up here, I'm going to go ahead and write the equivalent fractions. So this is going to be 18 over 28. 5 sevenths would be 20 over 28. And then this one's going to be 21 over 28. So if I was going to order these from least to greatest, so I'm looking for the least amount, this one is going to be the least. Okay. And then I'm, because what I'm doing is comparing the numerators. So 528, this would be second, this would be third, and this would be fourth. 